Hey everyone, how's it going? Today, let's take an in-depth look at the 2012 Mazda 3 Hatchback Sky Active. And this is going to be a detailed educational tour of the Mazda 3 Sky Active. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and take it on a test drive, go over the performance data, as we'll show you a bunch of the unique features on the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start it up, let it run. Now this particular model is known as the iTouring. The exterior color is known as Indigo Lights Mica, and it has the dune cloth interior and black accenting. Stepping on up to the GT or Grand Touring model, and you can opt for a full leather interior. This has the optional Sky Active 6 speed manual transmission specifically designed for this car. Talk about that in just a second. New interior chime, and unique blue backlit gauges specifically to the Sky Active. The Sky Active Mazda 3 comes with Mazda's Electro Hydraulic Power Assisted Rack and Pinion Steering System. Provides excellent feedback as well as sharp maneuverability on the road while still being mild mannered and easy to control at low speeds. It also comes with two optional transmission options specific for the Sky Active application, one being the Sky Active Drive 6 speed automatic gearbox and this particular vehicle's 6 speed manual transmission. It was designed keeping the Mazda Miata in mind as far as the sport, short throw shiftability, and overall driving pleasure that a lot of buyers favor in that little car. So that what they essentially did was take a 45 millimeter short throw range as well as make the transmission lighter and smaller to improve efficiency. So reverse and first gear actually share the same input shaft as do the second and third gear. What that basically does is it allows the secondary shaft in the transmission to be 20% smaller. So shorter, lighter, a little bit more efficient. Also unique is the 6-speed Skyactiv Drive automatic gearbox like I said specifically designed for this concept. Now I haven't driven one myself so I can't comment on it fully but what Mazda's basically done is taken the best of all the different transmissions on the market for low speed acceleration, reliability, smooth shifting, rapid shifting, sort of like a dual clutch setup, and a nice little compact size. The interior also has its unique nuances in this application but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So, go ahead and cut on the headlamps. As well as the hazards, fully automatic driver's side window, and we're we'll going to check out the exterior, shall we? For the mid-cycle refresh of this generation Mazda 3, we see the introduction for the first application of Mazda's new Sky Active technology, which basically utilizes a fully built 2-liter 4-cylinder, as well as several different transmission options, as I said earlier, to yield fantastic fuel economy while still keeping true to the Mazda Zoom Zoom sport philosophy. And throughout the video I'll be sure to highlight all of those key aspects. Mazda 3's in general get a little bit of a refresh with the new front fascia as well as rear fascia and a little bit toned down on the smiley face front end. A lot of people were a little bit mixed about it when it was first introduced but this new body styling with the increased angles as well as flares make it look a lot more sporty and integrated. Standard projector beam halogen headlamps where xenons are an option, and specifically for Sky Active models, you have a blue tinted ring going around the main bulb. Beautiful swooping lines blending into the grille and tapering down to that jutted front clip. From the side, the car hasn't changed all that much. Still characteristic Mazda 3. Integrated lines swooping down, blending into the front fender. Nice and smooth with accenting coming across the door handles and little modest fender flare extensions. You also have new wheels for 2012, one being this optional 16-inch aluminum alloy unit, 
four-wheel disc brakes with stability as well as traction control mounted on Bridgestone tires measuring 20555. Sky Active is essentially a marketing term for Mazda, meaning the sky is the limit. By basically taking the technology we have now, tweak it just a little bit, able to provide fantastic fuel economy without actually having to compromise on fun or performance. For the Mazda 3, body rigidity has been increased 30% as well as increased body wells to give a more composed, solid feeling vehicle down the highway without compromising its ride quality. More underbody panels have actually been utilized also to decrease the coefficient of drag by about 7% to a class leading for this segment of 0.27. The Mazda 3 is 177.4 inches long with a width of 69.1 inches and a height of 57.9 inches. Curb weight is around 2,969 pounds. I'm a real big fan of the back end of the newer generation Mazda 3s as well, even more so than the front end. Beautiful clear tail lamps out back, exhaust port down below on the side with polished exhaust tip, stepping on up to the Speed 3 for a dual exhaust setup. And, just as the unique tail lamps up front, you also have modest badging across the back. And your trunk release button located there. Large rear spoiler with integrated third brake light. And we're going to pop the hood. Obviously all the hubbub with the Skyactive technology boils down to its power plant. A 2-liter dual overhead cam, 16-valve 4-cylinder with dual variable valve timing as well as direct injection. Unique blue engine cover matching the exterior badging produces around 155 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 148 foot-pounds of torque at 4,100 RPM. Has a 0-60 to 60 time of around 7.9 seconds with a quarter mile time of around 16 seconds at 89 miles an hour. Now the Skyactive power plant is more than just engine tuning. A lot of the internals have been modified to make it a much more lighter, more smaller compact package. It features lighter pistons and piston rings as well as lighter connecting rods. It also features reduced piston ring tensile force, narrower crankshaft main journals, adoption of roller finger follower which basically leads to a greater than 50% reduction in valve friction, as well as the adoption of a compact electronic variable pressure oil pump which reduces oil pumping loss by about 45%. Now the way these engines were also designed was pretty interesting. With a sky high compression ratio of around 13 to 1, you actually have to do a couple extra tweaks to the engine to kind of combat that high pressure system. So basically, Mazda developed for the CX-5 crossover application something known as a 421 header. What that does is it gives a longer tube header and dissipates the ex hot exhaust gases a lot quicker so you don't have any back pressure of the gases back into the combustion chamber and loss of efficiency. And the only problem with that is that the hot exhaust gases sometimes take a little bit longer of a time to heat up the catalytic converter properly. So what they did is they, did they actually delayed the ignition timing just a little bit, but that can also cause unstable combustion. So what you see right here is their solution for that, creating a combustion pocket in the piston at the top, which makes it look like that little volcano structure off to the right. What that does is it actually focuses the burn and the initial spark to keep it localized. So the burn is actually a lot more focused than it would be just dissipating out across the cylinder head. Now with the direct injection system, it actually sprays the fuel directly onto the cylinders also, thus creating a cooling effect and the overall efficiency of the gasoline that you're burning. So all put together, it's quite a slick little system how they kind of worked out all the little caveats to a high pressure system.
The Mazda 3 Sky Active is such an enthusiastic car to drive. The shifts are crisp, clean, and there's a little bit of a clink at the end of each row to give you that solid assurance of a short throw gearbox. I also like the blend of performance for the Mazda 3. It's not a race car, but it's not slow either. It's got a very respectable 0 to 60 time in this segment, especially with the manual transmission, it just makes it that much more fun. The suspension is nice and tight, essentially just throw it into any curve that you want to, drop it down a gear, and rock it out the other side. The only way I can really describe it as being sort of like a poor man's BMW. And what I mean by that, it's essentially the ultimate driving machine that you can get for one of these price points that blends power as well as handling so nicely in an affordable and well equipped with standard package. It essentially does many things well and encompasses in a nice wide range of drivers to kind of not polarize itself so to speak to just a very specific market. The interior of the Mazda 3 is also quite sporty. Some of the interior bits have been improved for 2012 to give a little bit more of a refined feel without actually having to lose that sport feel. Two-tone paneling across the doors, cloth inserts coming across the sides. Like I said, all of your power windows are located here, your window lockout, power mirrors, power locks. A few of the touch points do have a little bit of soft touch material going across the doors, namely the dash, steering wheel, and a couple other little bits, but there is a little bit of use of harder materials, but at a price for the Sky Active, around 19000 or so, it's quite a bargain for what you get. New grippy cloth seating with a reasonable amount of side bolstering across the sides, different material in the middle, a fully manual seating with your recline here, height adjustment here, and your standard sliding up there. Side airbags as well as adjustable seat belts. Your fuel cap release, logoed floor mats, and your blue interior illumination, part of the Sky Active package. Located on each side, more pronounced at night, and I'll show that in just a little bit. Very swoopy, yet forward facing dash, manual tilt, telescoping steering wheel, and you can also opt for a sunroof. So let's go ahead and see as she sounds. Overall, it's a pretty mild-mannered engine, especially on the road, but it does have its nice sound points. Shut her up. Nice and tight. Now we'll check out some of the interior lights at night. Now this particular touring comes with a standard six speaker audio system with in-dash CD player as well as MP3 and iPod connectivity, but opt for the grand touring, you can also get an optional Bose sound system. Standard satellite radio. Even the standard speakers in these vehicles are absolutely incredible. They sound like mini subwoofers built into the door. They just pound and pound and pound. If you have your computer hooked up to a sound system or subwoofer, you'll definitely appreciate it.
Plus, you have the pulsating accenting. Your side curtain airbags. Manually dimming rear view mirror. Overhead illumination. As well as your microphone for your hands free Bluetooth telephone. The audio controls and as well as the climate controls are actually a lot more simpler in this model. They're bigger, less confusing buttons. While it looks like a lot, basically all you have to be concerned with is volume, tune, and that's pretty much it. The audio adjustments are located over here. Just press it, shows up top, give your speed compensated volume, as well as other audio adjustments. If your different radio modes up top, FM, AM, CD, satellite radio, auxiliary, your preset stations, disc, MP3 settings, seek track, as well as other radio adjustments, pretty self-explanatory. Go down below, extremely simple climate control, different zones, front defrost, rear defrost activation down here, as well as recycling. Down below, little cubby hole, 12 volt power outlet, cup holders, and a full console, a little bit of soft touch to it, removable tray, modest cargo well, 12 volt power outlet, as well as auxiliary. Pass your MP3 cord cables to these grooves here. As we come across the steering wheel, we have a vast array of buttons, large, easy to read, you have your cruise control located down below here. This setting is actually for your little heads up display up in the dash. Now, it's a little bit archaic in design with the font and color scheme and stuff, but it's, it's simple. With the upgraded trims of the Mazda 3, you can actually get an optional navigation system in there, and I have a video on a 2012 Speed 3 so you can with it in it so you can see what I'm talking about. But it is a little bit ways away. I find kind of have to look over a little bit sometimes around the steering wheel to see. And use the little directional arrows and the enter button to select options. Back button. Personal preference options. Average fuel economy. Pretty simple in its options. You have your intermittent wipers. In the middle, you have a digital readout for fuel. And the temperature gauge is actually built in with a little colored accenting. When you cold start the vehicle, it'll actually show up blue, letting you know the car needs to warm up just a little bit before you bring it up to operating temperature. And then over red in instances of increasing temperature. You also have radio controls as well as your hands-free dialing and voice commands. Help. You can make calls by saying call, dial, or redial. Say phone book to manage the phone book entries. Say setup to access system and Bluetooth settings. You can also say tutorial to hear the hands-free telephone tutorial. I paired my iPhone to it a little while earlier and it's very simple. It walks you through the whole process. So let's go and pair a phone right quick. Pair a phone. The paired phone is not available. Would you like to pair a phone now? Yes. Entering the Setup Pairing Options menu. Start the pairing process on your Bluetooth device. Your pairing code is 0000. zero, zero, zero. Input this code on your Bluetooth device when prompted by the device. See Device Manual for instructions. So after your phone is searched, found Mazda. You're going to enter the pairing code specifically given to by the vehicle. Please say the name of the device after the beep. Kyle's iPhone. Adding. Kyle's iPhone. Is this correct? Yes. Pairing complete. And there you go. Simple as that. Trashing controls located off to the left with your display brightness. 
quartz speedometer cluster brightness, and that's essentially all the basic features of the front of the interior. Go ahead and shut her down. Now let's check out the back seat. As far as the back, it does have a little bit more room compared to some of the other competitors on the market, or hatchbacks, but for taller passengers you still might feel a little bit of a squeeze. Back seats fold down to increase the efficiency of having the hatchback, loading up taller items, then hopping on in. I'm about 5'10", with the seating positioned up front and comfortable to me. My knees are just barely touching the seat, but there's a little bit of give there. Headroom is actually pretty good, about two, two and a half inches. Very solid doors in the vehicle. Little coat hook up there. See a little bit more of that swooping dash in the back seat. Rear illumination, small quarter windows in the back. The only thing that I'm surprised it doesn't have, a little bit more convenience for the back seat, is an extra pocket on the back of the seat, or driver's seat. So let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Probably one of the best things, like I said, about having a hatchback is how much stuff you can put in them. They're very versatile. With just that little bit of, a, little bit of opening, you can pretty much put in whatever you want. You could take off this privacy cover and have it completely open, so take all that out and you can see how practical it can get. Your jack stowage is off to the left. It's also illuminated. If you have a little trouble with visibility, pull that little strap, fold down the headrest. Manual passenger seat as well, minus the height adjustment. Good size glove box. The Mazda 3 Skyactiv is a nice blend between the base model as well as the more potent 2.5 liter. With increased fuel economy, unique transmission options, definitely a pretty cool option for people who want the best of both worlds. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the 2012 Mazda 3 Hatchback Skyactiv. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.